We are still roughly two months away from the 2024 Copa America that will be hosted in the United States of America, which is also the second biggest and most important competition this cycle for the US men's national team, only behind the World Cup. With that said, what will a US men's national team 23 men roster look like? Some positions pick themselves, but others are actually very debatable. And I believe we will have two or three big names left out of this roster. So today we're going to be debating that which players or which big names will be left out of the US men's national team 2024 Copa America roster, or I guess we're going to do an early roster prediction video. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Filippo and welcome to Tactical Manager TV and welcome to this 2024 US Men's National Team Copa America roster prediction. Now keep in mind, it is way too early, but there are a lot of intriguing debates for specific positions. So I thought to myself, why not? Especially after I convinced myself that a few big names will not make it. Roughly a week before the release of the roster, we will do a roster prediction video Hun style solo. But for this one, we have Adam, also known as USMNT Stan on X. Remember, we're trying to predict what Burhalter will do, and feel free to let us know what we might get right or wrong. Please hit the like button as you will be helping the channel in the process, and I won't be requesting during the video because it would just disrupt the debate between me and Adam of what this roster would look like. All right, thank you very much. Let's roll the intro and let's get it started. Okay, long time no see, Adam. I'm seen back. You. You're back already, already. But look, uh, it's always good to have Adam here. And what happens today is we're going to talk about the U.S. Men's National Team Copa America roster. Me and Adam have been kind of like just talking this about about this roster off camera. A lot of it from Burhalter is predictable, but there are a lot of positions that, not a lot, a few positions that there are some question marks there. And we also will be talking about what we would do in certain instances. So you guys can all feel free in the comment section to let us know what would you do for the Copa America. Uh, uh, a spoiler alert, I think, well, at least for my prediction, I don't know about yours, there are two big players that I think don't make the roster. Which will be oh, wow. a surprise. Yes, two. They're actually big names. No, it's not Pulisic or Reina, but or McKenny. But there's two players that you guys are gonna see that I don't think will make it. And I don't know if you're. We'll, we'll get Ooh, there. But, I'm excited. But, look, Adam, we're gonna do a 23 man roster. We'll start the goalkeepers. There are a few that we won't waste much time because it's so obvious and self-explanatory. Like the goalkeeper, right away. If we start the goalkeeper, Matt Turner's a lock, and I think Ethan Horvath is also a lock. Your I your long lost brother. Um, that's my guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the, the only question there is one position that's not super relevant, which is the third goalkeeper. Uh, right. you want to give your prediction there? I'll give you mine. It's, it's, I want to go a bit, not controversial, but I want to go with a player that hasn't really been called in by Burhalter, but I think he would. Who's yours though for the third goalkeeper? I think he could go a lot of different directions with this. And I, it's funny, like I just put, in and this is something that I think we're gonna kind of try and present to you guys, right? Like what we feel like Burhalter is gonna do here, and then also what we're gonna do. And it's funny for third goalkeeper, I actually didn't even put my thought into like what Burhalter would do. Oh, I, I just did kinda, because it's so <laughs> insignificant. I think I didn't I just wasn't even putting time into it. I I would go with I would continue to go with Gaga, and it's simply to get him integrated into the team. I, I do still believe of the guys that are within a few years away from potentially being impactful, he still is the guy I like the most. Um, so I would just keep giving him reps as the third keeper. I don't don't think he's close to playing. I wouldn't play him if Turner got a red card or got hurt or something like that. I wouldn't play him, but he's my third. I don't know. What, what is your feel on what Burhalter will do there? Like an MLS guy? Like a... Here's what I think. I think there's two players that Burhalter would bring. I don't think Gaga will go there. I think Gaga's level is the Olympic team, and I think he should be always focused on that. He shouldn't be in the senior team. There are certain occasions where I would say bring a player based off potential because I'm assuming your your call for Gaga is probably mostly on potential rather all than all potential. All potential because right now I don't think he would contribute. I would not feel confident on having Gaga Sonina starting in the Copa America. I wouldn't bring him. Uh, so I think Burhalter will bring either Drake Callender 
or Patrick Schult from the Columbus crew. Uh, he's playing, he won, like, if you go to Patrick Schult or Schulte, I don't know how to actually pronounce, I, I, I call him Patrick Schult, the goalkeeper from the Columbus crew. He's young for a goalkeeper, he's 23, but he was clearly good enough to help them win MLS Cup with some bright moments. Still has shaky moments. Uh, when we're recording this, this was the day after the penalty shootout that they defeated Tigres in the CONCACAF Champions Cup. He saved two penalty kicks away. He did make a mistake earlier in the game, but he made up for it. Didn't let that, you know, knock him down. And he's a young goalkeeper, so that's actually quite impressive. I'm not saying he's our future. I think the goalkeeper situation for the U.S. men's national team is the worst it's been since the 90s. Uh, or before the 90s, actually. Before. But I think Burhalter will bring Drake Callender or Patrick Schultz. And we know Burhalter also has a connection with the Columbus crew. I'm not saying that will force them to bring a player, but I, I, it could play a role. Mm -hmm. like, hey, this is a young goalkeeper that if I have to play him, might do okay. I, I wouldn't be overly confident on it, but I who's think that's... Third, who's the third keeper on the World Cup roster? World John, Cup. Sean Johnson? It was Sean Johnson. And then in the last one, I think it was Drake Callender in the last one. It was. Yeah, I... There's a part of me that he doesn't yeah, bring I, young goalkeepers. You notice that very often. I know, and that, there's a part of me that could see him just going with like a safe roster guy that he feels like knows guys, and just go with a Sean Johnson. But because it doesn't, it, it actually doesn't matter. This is one of the roster spots yeah. I will not get caught up on, no matter who it is. You will not see me complain. <laughs> like, let's let's skip it then. I I, I think he's going to bring Turner, Horvath, and Calendar. And my third goalkeeper would actually be be Patrick Schulte from the Columbus Crew. I would bring him in. Not just based on potential. I think he could contribute if needed. I wouldn't want him to play, but that's a different discussion. So let's move on and go to, let's say, the fullbacks. I think the fullbacks, there are three of them that, if they're healthy, there's no debate, even with the struggle as camp. Sergio Das from PSV, he's our starting right back. Anthony Robinson from Fulham, he's our starting left back. Those are easy. Joe Scally sure. made a mistake against Jamaica. Yes, partially made a mistake, didn't have a good performance. I still think he's a roster lock. Can play right back, can play left back. Scally will be there. He's the only question mark is the fourth fullback, which which then we start to get into that. I mean, if you look at Burhalter's rosters, he's only been calling Christopher Lund. So is that I, well, probably you know, I actually I actually back? think with a 23 man. I think he and I will align here. I don't think he will bring a fourth fullback. And I would not bring a fourth fullback. Really? I think he'll bring three. I think you have – I think he showed that he's willing to play Weston McKinney in a jam. He has Timmy Weah, who's got experience, you know, playing on the right. And I think that it, – and it's the way I would go too. I'm interested to see if he brings like a lot – it just seems like a dead roster spot. You're not going to – you're not going to get to a place where you're playing Lund. Or, or any other guy that you would bring as a backup left back, right? You're not going to play a third right back, right? Like, there's no situation here, Tack, where you could tell me, oh, okay, Desk gets a red, worst case scenario, blows up again, kicks the ball to the sands, gets a red. We're not going to go like, like what, or, you know, Jedi gets, let's use Jedi, right? Jedi gets a red, boneheaded mistake, whatever. There's no world where it's like, all right, must win game against Uruguay, lunge, you're in. Like, it's just not happening. Like, mm -hmm. Dest, you're in. Scally, you're in on the right. Dest, you're in. We're, you know, going to move way back or we're going to play Wes over there. Mm -hmm. We're going to move Adam Adams over there who, you know, has played there in the past. There's going to be some other solution. And then even backups, right? Like even if you started Dest and Scally left and right, your backups wouldn't be Lund in a jam. I don't think. I, I think he would go to a number of other guys. Right. And and not go, OK, late game against Uruguay. We need to secure this game. I'm going to bring in Lund for his third ever cap or whatever it would be. Right. Like just not going to happen. So I think he's going to look at that and go, let me use the roster spot on someone else. And we can kind of fill in that spot in a lot of different ways. So so you your prediction would be Des Scali and Anthony Robinson. Cor correct. And. Mm -hmm auxiliary whoever else and we're going to utilize that roster spot on on other positions i i think he's still going to go with lund as the fourth fullback what i would probably do is i would bring in austin trusty as a left back which he can also play center back. well he's mainly a center back but he can also play left back i mean he's playing left back in the premier league against liverpool and chelsea so it's not like he is abysmal. It's not like if you throw him at the left back position, he's gonna suck. He'll he'll hold his own. It'll be an overly defensive left back. But again, depending on who we're facing, like you just mentioned, Uruguay, that, that wouldn't hurt. 
that, that, that wouldn't bother you. Brazil, Colombia, if you play a very defensive left back. So I would do that. I would I would go Dest, Scali, A Rob, and Trusty. And then obviously, if I need to, I can put Trusty as a center back. I have a versatile player. That's a right. 23 man roster for a tournament. So it is thin. You want to have more players. So versatility for a few guys is actually very important. So I, I would do that if I was Burhalter, but I think he's gonna go with safe. He's usually very predictable. Best Scally, A Rob, Lund. Let's go to center it back, Adam. Yeah, so set, and this will play into that same discussion, right? So I think – let's just go through what Burhalter is going to do, and I actually think it's fairly predictable. I think he's going to go Reem, Richards, CCV, and Miles. I think those are his four, right? Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I don't even think there's much room for debate at this point. I think those are his top four. I think he's proven that since he came back last fall. Um, just if you look at the overall call-ups, those have been the guys who have gotten the most, gotten the most opportunity – Zimmerman is out for him, right? He doesn't seem to be, he's not as much as all of us. A lot of people have wanted John Brooks back in the picture. John Brooks is not coming back in the picture. I've kind of like mentally tried to move on from it because I fought it for three years and I just, I don't feel like having the conversation. Sorry if anybody else feels different, no big deal. It just hasn't excited me. I'm like, he is gone until Burhalter's gone. And so that means he's probably gone forever. Um, so those are the four, the thing that I would do different tack and very similar to your, your trusty piece, right. Is when I look at over the next two, three years, who are the other center backs we could bring in right now that if they had to play, I don't feel that bad about it, but at the same time, they have a little potential moving forward. Right. And they have some versatility and you mentioned Austin trusty. And to me, he's that guy, right? He's starting to play at a higher level. He's not old, right? He's a younger guy. He certainly still has potential and upside to like have a career move and arc in the way that CCVs has, which that's that's exciting, right? It's not the end, you know, it's not um, Chris Richards. It's not a guy who's going to really thrive in the Premier League, but that's not bad. And I would rather bring that guy in right now than Miles. And to your point, because I also would do what I think Berhalter is going to do, which is bring just three left or three fullbacks. He's a guy who you could put in a jam in a left back spot, right? Especially a stay at home left back spot. He would be great at that. So that's what the direction I would go. I don't think Burhalter will bring trusty though. He, he hasn't so, shown us that. Well, that hold on. You, you said three fullbacks and you think he'll also bring only four center backs. Correct. I think he's bringing, I think we're, we're bringing seven across the back. And I think the reason why tack is because we just played Weston McKinney at right back. <laughs> like Timmy Weah has been playing essentially the same position. Sergio Des plays <laughs> like, for the last year and a half, right? So he can play there. And I think that he trusts Adams to, to platoon there if needed. So I don't know. I And I think maybe he won't do that, right? Maybe he will bring a total... I, it would just be so wasteful to bring a backup left back. It seems pointless. It seems like a guy who, who will never the drop play. drop-off is too big. That's the problem. The drop-off's too big. And it's not like a good... I don't... Maybe I'm wrong. It doesn't seem like an integral roster guy. It doesn't seem like a guy who you're like, this guy's going to uplift the locker room. This guy's been with a group a while. It's going to be good for continuity. This guy, like, that's the other thing you have to remember about building rosters is like, guys need to add more than just playing ability. Now, if we think back to last cycle, we were bringing guys who can't compete if they're put on the field. And that's a non-starter for me, right? It can't be, let's bring guys who can't compete, who aren't even close to competitive enough, right? The role Dan's, the area, like, to me, that was a non-starter. You know, every, a lot of people, we fought about that for four years, it felt like. But, like, that's not what we have anymore, right? We're not bringing Roldan, right? Like, the guys that we can now bring, and this is probably skipping ahead, are guys like Brendan Aronson, who's playing in the Bundesliga, right? Like, he's now the, the version of Roldan, and he's way better than Roldan. They're so, going to kill you. They're going to kill you for the name, man. <laughs> roll down, roll down, roll down. My bad, roll my bad. <laughs> roll down. So, yeah, so that's, that's how important he was for the team. Roll Dan. Roll Dan. Yeah, yeah. Roll Dan. Yeah. Like, dude. So I think that if you look at this roster, and I think Burr Halter from a roster building standpoint and lineup standpoint is starting to get better. I, I mean, I think, I think he's been great since he got back. I've had almost no issue with rosters or lineups. And he's starting to get smart about stuff like that. But we'll we'll see. That's it's the direction I would but, go for sure. You see, I'm I'm like a I'm like an impatient child. And then I have a question. I want you to, to spoil it real quick and real quick. And then we'll move on to the midfield. 
So sure. normally, normally the roster composition would be three goalkeepers, four fullbacks, four four center backs, six midfielders, four wingers, and and two center forwards. Uh, you are obviously missing one on your prediction on those first ones. Which sector of the field do you think he's going to bring an extra man? Midfield, wingers, or center forwards? I got six midfielders. I've got uh -huh. four wingers, and I've got three center forwards. Okay, so an extra center forward. That's what you put. Exactly. Okay, sure. we'll get there. We'll get there. And I'm okay. excited to explain that because it builds into what I think the versatility is. We just saw him bring three center forward ish guys, but we'll see. Let's get there. Let's get. We'll there. get there. We'll get there. So now we're going to go to the midfield, and I think the midfield. This is where I have the first big name missing. And I think he's going to bring six midfielders, just like yourself. But but just one thing, before I go to midfielders, just to recap, the center backs that we believe are Miles, Tim Ream, Cameron Carter-Vickers from Celtic, and Chris Richards from Crystal Palace. Now, back right. to the midfield. Uh, I think he's going to bring six, just like you. And then we can go right away and eliminate the locks. Who are the locks? Tyler Adams, healthy, is 100% a roster lock. lock. Weston McKinney, healthy, 100% a roster lock. Yunus Musa, 100% a roster lock. Gio Reyna, 100% a roster lock. I actually think Johnny became a roster lock because he's yep. the backup of Tyler, and that's a guy that Berhalter has brought in multiple times. He became a roster lock. So you have one last spot open, and who who's competing for that? Let's go to the options. Leonard Maloney from Heidenheim. He only makes it maybe if Tyler or Johnny are out. In this case, they're not, so Leonard is out. No chance. And then when you go on, you have Malik Tillman from PSV, which very talented player and technically should maybe be a roster lock, but he was very disappointing last camp. And he has a player playing La Liga competing with him. His name is Luca De La Torre that Berhalter has played multiple times and called in multiple times. So it kind of becomes a debate between Tillman or Luca. Who would Greg bring? I would personally bring Malik Tillman because he's my Gio Reyna backup. Regardless of underperforming for the national team, I think the talent is there, and I would persist on the kid. Not to start, but he's my backup. But I'll tell you what. I think Greg Berhalter will bring Luca De La Torre if he's healthy. Same. Same, Tack. And let me explain, actually, the deeper thinking that I had about behind this. And I don't even think it's that flawed for, for those that are like very offended by that thought. Um, I also would push come to shove. I would bring Malik as well for some of the versatility he can bring. He could play as a creative winger and kind of give you more creativity. If you were put into a jam along with backing up geo and being somebody who can come in and be a like for like, right? We don't really have a like for like. So if we're playing really well and geos creativity up the field, right? And we didn't get to see this last camp. We really didn't get to see Malik come in the game late game, tired legs, and be and be able to do what he does, right? And we know he thrives more against lower level opponents, higher defenders, right? And that's okay right now as a young player. But it's unfortunate we didn't get to see that because to me that's the role. It's like Geo starts. Tillman's a guy who can come he's in. A bully. He's a bully. He bullies. Yeah, if you don't need to like park the bus, he's a great guy to come in and be a like for like against you know some some dead legs. But we didn't get to see that. So that's the way I would go too. I think he's going to go Luca because he's going to see Copa as a place where he needs more of like a, an MMA type midfield. Right. And I don't mean, I don't think that means he's going to start the MMA midfield, but I think he's going to see more of a need to have more like for likes more. Def I think Luca's more defensive than Tillman. I don't think that's a hot take, right? He can do a little bit more defensively. He's more of a box to box. You can play him there. He has played there for the national team. And I think over time there's been more trust that's been built. And I don't think Tillman did himself any favors to gain Greg's trust last camp. I think Greg was giving him a, a, a big chance to do that, and I think he fell short. So I agree. I think we see Luca. Well, and what you said is a valid point, too. When you look into the Copa America, Burhalter, for whatever flaws he has, which we talk about it very often, when he looks into our opponents, he's going to see Panama and Bolivia. And what he's going to get out of that, he's like, those are games that he'll probably start, like Tyler, McKenney, and Gio. And... And sure, maybe you can, if Gio's not playing well, you take him out and then you put Tillman, or, but then you'll probably just put like Musa. It, it wouldn't matter um, to get the result there. But then after that, when we play Uruguay, and then it'll probably be Colombia, Brazil, hopefully advancing out of the group, which knock on wood, I'm assuming we won't get out of the group. He probably is looking towards, sure, I, I'll probably start Gio but probably more MMA midfield or more diff guy that can play some defense like Luca. 
and Luca can also play on the wing. Like Celta has been utilizing him right. wide multiple times, so he has that versatility that that also Tillman has. Not as creative as Tillman. I would argue not as talented as Tillman too, especially in the final third. But I, I think that's what Berhalter will do. Also more experience, right? Yeah. Luca was in the World Cup roster, more experience with the group. So I think he's going to go with Tyler, Musa, McKenney, Johnny, Gio Reyna, and Luca. But I, I would probably replace Luca with Tillman. That's that's what I would do. But I think and Tillman I, Tillman will be out of the Copa America roster. With that said, should we push for PSV and Ernie Stewart to release him for the Olympics? He's age eligible. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Right? 1,000%. And that's like the cool part is if a couple of these young guys do miss Copa, right? Shockingly. Pretty cool opportunity to have the Olympics. Pretty nice to be qualified for the Olympics finally and have that as like a at least a fallback in a high level U23 tournament. So you know, my my one last thought here on this is that I I think it I think thinking about that MMA midfield and how we approached specifically the England game, right? And thinking, okay, now we have a you know a healthy knock on wood, informed Gio Reyna, right? And I'm not saying this is what I would do. I actually wouldn't do this, but I think there's a valid argument for saying, let's play Geo at right wing and keep that same approach to the midfield we had against England, where we're going to bully it. But once again, this is not an invalid argument. We played well against England with those tactics, right? Whether or not it's your favorite tactics or mine, it's that is not an absurd argument, right? And I also don't love Geo on the wing, but once again, if it's like, hey, we want this physical midfield, but Geo Reign is never coming off the field, right? Like that could be an approach that Greg has, and I, to be honest, I wouldn't hate that. I certainly wouldn't hate it if we performed the way we performed against England against a higher level opponent, right? Like, so there's some arguments there for that as well, right? And if you do that, now all of a sudden you have Musa and McKinney on the field getting exhausted, right? With Adams, you can very easily sub in Johnny as a like for like with Adams, but then you need a like for like in the midfield if you're going to play those other two guys, right? Like who, you know, who's sub, if Gio actually plays on the wing and he's exhausted and he needs a sub, Who's subbing in for Musa and McKinney that can like at least somewhat replicate what they do? That's not Tillman, right? So now you, you bringing a Luca allows you to kind of sub in that MMA type midfield and have more of a like for like. So once again, I'm just throwing out theoreticals. I think there's legit arguments here. Certainly not the approach I would have. To me, Geo should be in the middle of the park. You know, I think I'm on record. I don't think I need to go too deep into that. That's what I want. But I think there are some cool formations that you could kind of play around with and that I think Greg's probably thinking about. I would definitely oppose to Gio being out wide, even with those tactics, because I think one of the big reasons it worked was because McKenney was the right midfielder. And I think that works. He knows how to play that role. Gio, I don't think he would have the work rate and just doesn't suit his game. But what's at the end of the day, the midfield, the debate in terms of Burhalter's roster, it's really between Luca or Tillman. Who's going to be left out? Or they both make it. And then a winger gets cut, maybe. Who knows? That's another possibility. Tech, 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 can I ask you this, though, real quick? So if if they, he decides, hey, we're going MMA, and when we do that, naturally, we don't have as much of a presence, right? Mo modern soccer is tucked in wingers, right? For a lot of clubs, not all clubs, Most, but yeah. tucked wingers, right? Like, um, people are crazy, so they're going to think I'm comparing Gio to Leo Messi, but it's Leo Messi. Leo Messi is not playing wide on the line, touch line, making runs behind. He's tucked in and playing like a 10 from the right wing spot. Would you not want, if we did go MMA, if that's Greg's like, I am gung-ho on MMA, would you not want Gio on the field? Um, Like, would you rather have Timmy Weah doing that? Well, I just wouldn't go MMA. That's the problem. I know, I know. But let's just say he's gung-ho on that, right? Well, and that's I, my point, right? If he's gung-ho on let's dominate the midfield with physicality, not with a, a, a 10, a guy who's, you know, we, we're going to get on the ball in zone 14 and he's going to create. Because in that, once again, like well, win second here's, balls, here's dominate the physicality. On this. I, I have multiple, like we talked about roster selections and starting 11s, how Greg improved in that. And then we start to enter another issue of Burhalter because those are not issues anymore for the most part. It's the way he wants the, his positional play, the way he wants each player to be in each phase of play. So we have those fullbacks that they're high up the field every single time providing width, the eight. So in that scenario, it's like, sure, Des is providing the width. I don't, and then, and then Geo's tucked in pretty much as a 10, not really as a winger. Do I like that? No, I don't love it. I think Gio having freedom to roam at the 10, going wide. I like Gio approaching Pulisic at times. I know they can't combine if they get it going. And then if we get into those specifics, we're going to have to start diving into Greg's system, which I very much still hate. I, no, I really that's fine. Hate it. 
but like I'm just gonna play devil because I actually think this is an interesting combo. We very rarely disagree too. Yeah. Like you, you know, we're pretty aligned on a lot of stuff. And I think I'm probably like I'm probably aligned, but I'm gonna play devil's advocate, right? We're looking at a game like Brazil, mm -hmm. right? And we're going, man, like if Gio is pushed up the field the whole game, we have got Tyler and Wes or Johnny and wh whoever you're putting there are on islands, like more islands, right? Like to your point, tactically, we can now get into, can we push, a you know, A-Rob back as a stay at home? We've talked about all that stuff, but I think there's a legit argument to say, let's put more bodies that are defensive in the midfield and physical in the midfield and not necessarily, and we're going to approach this game, not one where we're going to be in possession, but where we're actually not going to be in possession, right? Against Brazil, let's just be honest. Like, we're going to have to play a little bit more we, old school US if we play Brazil, If we play Brazil, what I would do for the United States is, I'm not going to talk about the back line. I'm just going to say, I'll play a 4-2-3-1. Obviously, that varies in phase of play. I'm just saying the standard formation of it. I'm not going to get into the phases of play. I kind of posted on Twitter a while back in possession, defensive shape. But I would go with Johnny and Tyler, which is as well as you can protect that back line. I also think having Johnny there on the field against Brazil would help a little bit. He probably knows most of the players playing style, just the experience to play with Brazilian players. So he would know that. And then you have Tyler that is fantastic in protecting that back line. So you have to start him against Brazil. I'd have Gio at the 10. And then you might be wondering, oh, you're benching McKenny. No, I would have McKenny playing out wide, somewhat like how he plays for Juve at times as a right midfielder, not really a wing back or not really a right winger midfielder. He would be defending and tracking back because, again, you don't want to leave a guy like Serginho Dest in isolation with Vinicius. So now For all sure. of a sudden you have McKenney staying back a bit more like a right midfielder rather than a winger. That's yeah. how to go Brazil. Now Pulisic on the left wing. I don't adapt Pulisic to Brazil. And then I have Gio as the 10, and I'll put Balogun up top because Brazil, you're going to have to play in transition. They yeah. they love to hold the ball. Yes. They love to play in possession. You're going to have to play in transition. Yes. And then Balogun is the best center forward we have in transition. So that's what I would do against Brazil specifically. And, and when it comes to Brazil, I thought about this so much because I know Brazil so well. I know the U.S. so – and I, I, I'm i going to be honest with you, people watching this video, I am hoping they don't face each other in the Copa America. I am <laughs> hoping. But – the odds are pointing towards that matchup yeah, at it's, some point. It, and, and I think you, you mentioned the point. I like the idea of McKinney playing there, right? I, I think whoever plays out wide, I know we're getting, kind of getting into a separate topic, but it's pretty fun, right, to think about. I think if you look back to the Nations League, not this past year, right, not, not a month ago, but last year, and you remember we had Brendan Aronson basically do what you just talked about having West do, right? Which with is Alfonso Davies, right? With Alfonso yeah. Davies. And Alfonso Davies was frustrated because he pretty much at all, and we kind of sacrificed Aronson going up the field, which honestly was fine. And it would be totally fine against Brazil. Like, but you're getting to, to my overall point, right? Which is whichever way you're going to configure it, you're going to have to be more conservative. Whether that's we're not going to have a right wing up the field all game, we're not going to have an attacking 10 up the field all game, we're going to be more conservative with the midfield. And so I think those are the things that, you know, getting back to our real point here, those are the things that are going through Greg's head, right? So when he's like, do we need Tillman, who's more of an attacking base guy? I think the answer is going to be no. And it's going to be like, let's bring an extra box to box type guy. And I think that's where it's going to land. So let's go on to the wingers then now, because we, we got off topic, but it's a fun conversation. So why not? And the wingers, I think right now there are three wingers that are locked into the roster. Well, Pulisic and Weah for sure. You can argue, should Weah start or not? I would still have Weah start, but yes, Weah could lose his starting job. I don't think that's too crazy to think. We even just put a scenario where you bench Weah, but roster, right. Weah is a lock. I do think Haji Wright is a lock in the roster now as a winger, in my opinion, because the guy had a brace against Jamaica. I thought he looked competent against Mexico, even as a center forward. So he looked good as a winger, competent as a center forward. I think he's a lock on the wing in the roster, Haji Wright. So those are three. But then we have number four, which then we start to think about it. If if Greg is going to bring Luca Del Torre in the midfield, could number four be Tillman? Will he bring Aronson? Um, Paredes, I think, is a little out of it uh, because Greg didn't bring him. Zendejas is probably a little out of it. Taylor Booth has fallen out. He's probably a, an Olympic roster guy. I think Greg brings Aronson back. Aronson has been playing better for Union Berlin. Uh, much better. I, I follow him every weekend, and I actually have been overly critical about Brendan Aronson, but lately he's been playing well for Union Berlin. we right. got to be fair here. 
Uh, and Greg likes Aronson. Even though he left Aronson out of the roster originally, he does like Brendan Aronson. So I think it'll be Pulisic, Weah, um, Haji Wright, and Aronson as the four wingers. But if he doesn't bring Tillman on the mid in the midfield, there is a case that Aronson could be left out for that. But I don't think it'll happen. I think Tillman won't be in the roster. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, say we have the same thoughts here, right? And once again, I think it's valid, which is like, okay, we have Pulisic, right? We have Weah, we have Haji. Now, okay, those are all guys who certainly are more going to be more centered on the final third. Now, who else can we bring here that can help us secure games? And to be honest, Brendan Aronson and Luca De La Torre are like field players 19 and 20. So let's just be, let's just put this straight up front. And Scally, right? Like Scally, Aronson, and Luca De La Torre on the roster I put together are whatever, 18, 19, 20. And that's pretty cool, right? Are we going to play 18, guy 18, 19, or 20? Are we going to go more not. than 17 Probably field players not. deep? I don't think so. So I think, and that's the other thing you have to think about when building a roster is, oh, Kevin Paredes, he's, you know, maybe he's more dynamic than Aronson. Maybe you like him more than Aronson. That's fine. Totally fair, honestly. But is he going to bring a guy who hasn't been with this group for years, who doesn't, you know, isn't going to be able to come into training and seamlessly like that stuff matters. Like having a senior on your roster in college is great. They know what you do day in and day out. They can lead because they're not, they don't have to worry about the drills. They know the drills. Now they can lead. They can encourage. They can be a good teammate. They can, a new guy, right? Any freshman, even if they're like great human beings are just like, whoa, this is big. You know? Are you telling us to bring Jordan Morris and Christian Roldan? <laughs> the, but here's the point, right? These, these were the arguments for those guys. And those were valid arguments in terms of like the theory. The problem is the gap was too big you, of the talent. You can't bring bad players. Like, what if they're needed? You know, like, what if worse comes to worse? Yeah, and worse didn't even come to worse. We just played Jordan Morris for no freaking reason in the World Shaq Cup. Shaq Moore, right? Shaq Moore played multiple. Shaq, times. I know. So I don't want to talk about that, but like, I think Greg's theory behind it is legitimate. I think he was looking at terrible guys to do that, and like. Now we actually have a roster that's deep enough and strong enough that Brendan Aronson's a Bundesliga player, Tack, right? Whether you've been critical of him or not, I've been critical because people said he was going to Liverpool mainly. I love Brendan Aronson. I've followed him since he was 19. I was watching games in Austria League games on, on my, you know, sling. <laughs> like, it was awesome. Like, during COVID, I remember watching Aronson when he, you know, when he moved to Austria. So... I love him. But Adam, let me let me just say one thing. When we say myself and even yourself, when, when I'm saying we're critical, very critical of Brendan Aronson, we're critical of him at the Bundesliga level. That's what it is, right? Exactly. There's a difference between being critical of right. a player. It's like he's like doing okay in MLS. Now you have a guy that is struggling in the Premier League. He struggled in the Premier League. And then he struggled for most of the season in the Bundesliga. Now he's coming to life. There is a difference between that. Um, because it's I mean, we've seen multiple players be, be, be very good in, in MLS. And then you bring in a Gio Reyna that is struggling in a top league and he just looks levels and levels above that player. Well, his parade is a great example. Right. He was really right. good in MLS when he was called in, but just never really looked like he belonged with the national team. So, uh, you know, our, 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 our Ferreras and our, uh, Ariolas, all those guys have become, and this is pretty fun, right? Like, Ariola, you mean nipples? And legit, like all those virgins, that's like Luca De La Torre is a guy we're talking about not being on a roster potentially, who's starting in Spain. Right? Vernon Aronson is a Bundesliga player, and we're talking about, man, maybe he doesn't make the roster. So, like, I'm fine, right? If you're talking about La Liga players and Bundesliga players being the guys you're bringing in because they know the system. And because they can, you know, they can be great practice guys. Cool. I'm in. I'm all the way in, right? Just, you know, don't try and talk me back into the guys that were terrible soccer players. So, I don't know. So, that that's what I see. I agree with you. Um, and I and honestly, I don't disagree with it. I like Aronson's ability to come into a game at multiple positions. If you're up 1-0, 2-0, and you need to secure a game, he's very good at that. I, I don't want him on the field if we need a goal. I don't want him starting. Um, like I said, I don't even think he will play, but I think if we're put into a, a spot where he needs to play, I think he can do a job competently um, and, at a, and at a decent level. Okay, let's move on here, Adam, to the last section of the video, which are the center forwards. And this one's interesting because you have three center forwards, which means I kind of know who you're going to bring, I'm, I'm assuming. 
but I have two. So that means I'm cutting one. I can't wait to and, hear it. Yeah. And I have my reasoning for it. Do you want to just go with your three first? I think they're probably more obvious yeah. than I'll, I'll explain my, sure. my, go ahead. And, and I'll, I'll explain one thing also with it. Ballo, Sergeant Pepe, pretty obvious, right? And if you look at that front line now, right? Ballo, Sergeant Pepe, Pulisic, Haji. We can play Haji on the left, Puli on the right, right? We can go Sergeant on the right if we need a more defensive, better aerial squad. You know, down the stretch in the game, we could have Pepe in the middle, Sergeant on the right, Haji on the left, right? And you have guys who can win headers, win corner headers, right, to secure a game. Like there's just, and I'm not saying I would do that. There's just so many different variations of things you can do up front with that, which is pretty fun and pretty cool to kind of, I was like playing around with all these alignments and it was like, man, there's so many different ways you can go about this. Oh, Dest is hurt. We can push way back and we can put McKinney up there. We can push way back and bring Pulisic over. So it's fun to have like puzzle pieces you can play with versus in the past. It's like, man, if this guy's hurt, we're going to have to play whoever player X right back in 2018. And it was like pretty dire. Um, who are you cutting, man? Who are you cutting? And I, think you're, Pepe, like, I think Pepe doesn't make it. Oh, man. And you think Burhalter is going to snub Pepe from Copa after snubbing him? Hold on. Snubbing him from the World Cup to bring Lund. Well, well, well here's the thing. Um, yes, I do think that is that's a real question. That, that's actually, I'll be angry, not from a soccer standpoint, because whatever. It's not, it doesn't impact us that much, to be honest. I'll just be mad from a human standpoint. Like, but look, know, let, like me, let me sucks, explain, man. Let me explain why I think this. So Pepe's agent came out with some comments like this week or last week, a couple of days ago from when we were recording this. And he seemed to, he pointed out the playing time at PSV, which I don't think that's going to change unless Luke De Jong gets injured. Luke De Jong is a much better player than Pepe. And Luke De Jong isn't really slowing down. So Pepe's minutes next season also probably won't go up. What I think will happen here is Burhalter has always rated Josh Sargent very highly. And if Sargent is healthy with the season he's having, he's going to make the roster. Balogun is not going to be left out. It's not going to happen. Um, even if he's struggling for Monaco, he's making it there. We, we already put Haji. And in my roster, there's only two center forwards. Well, three technically, because Haji is also center forward. And Greg even played him as a center forward. Pepe was not subbed in the last game against Mexico after he struggled against, um, what's his name, Jamaica. Minutes are not going to change. His agent came out very concerned about the Copa America spot. He mentioned that in the interview. He said there's a Copa America coming up. The minutes are low. We know the risk, which leads me to believe there might have been some conversation this time with Burhalter about that. Because Burhalter might be anticipated. Last time, he didn't anticipate it, and he created a little bit of friction with Pepe. But this time, Burhalter's probably communicating with Pepe and the agent already, saying, listen, this is what's happening. If you don't get called in, this is the reason. And I do see a possibility of Greg trying to you know, make yeah. ease things up by saying, listen, um, we'll talk to Ernie. You can play in the Olympics, we'll, and you'll be the, the starting center forward in the Olympics. Uh, we'll talk to Ernie Stewart. You're not getting many minutes, so they should release you PSV. You'll miss like a week. You'll be, you'll miss like two weeks of preseason, but you'll be playing, so you'll be in shape. Ernie will do it. And I'm bringing Balogun, Pepe, and Haji to the Copa America. I think it's a strong possibility. I, I didn't think that. I When we talked about recording this episode, which was three weeks ago, I think, yeah. right after the, 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 the camp, I didn't think that. But based on the comments from Ricardo Pepe's agent, and I don't have it here right now, but I talked about it in the USMNT Abroad series, it seemed like he is concerned about the Copa America spot. And I think Burhalter will not make that same mistake of leaving certain players out without already kind of like preparing them for it. And he's probably saying, he's like, probably like told him, he's like, look, the minutes that could happen, not telling Pepe is out. But I can see him already talking about because those comments from the agent, sure, he could complain about the playing time at PSV. He could do it. Why is he mentioning the national team? What does PSV have to do with that? Nothing. If he wants more minutes with PSV, what does the national team have to do with it? Nothing. So I think there's something there. I think he's going to go Balogun and Sargent as long I as they're think, helping. I, do, I don't doubt that the age that one, I don't doubt that there's maybe been some preliminary talks because it certainly could happen. I do not think when push comes to shove, 
in a, when, when's that roster going to be selected? Two months, something like that? Uh, less than two Three? months. A month and a half from now. It should be out late May, early June. Because we have the friendlies with Colombia and Brazil in the first early. week of June. So I'm saying like yeah, yeah, probably right. at month latest June 1st. At latest June 1st. So, but probably a little before that. I don't think, and this is, once again, everybody's healthy. I can't imagine you put these names down like we did here, Tack, and you start to build a roster and you go... Let me bring Lund, who zero percent chance. Let me ask you a question. Hold on, hold on. Let me zero percent chance he plays. Hold on. I'm gonna pick Pepe on the guy with a zero percent. Didn't like, he? Pepe but, has a but, chance but Adam, to play, right? But Adam, let me ask you one thing. He did that in the 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 Nations League, right? He he brought he left Haji out, but now we determined that after the performances, Haji's a lock. But he brought Lund, and That's then he had Sergeant really, Pepe and Balogun. That, but that was actually like honestly. It was actually okay. Like I was kind of fine with that when he did it. Like it kind of sucked, but I think one a lot of things probably for Burhalter and other people were like pretty unproven, right? Like Haji can play the wing. Like I know he's doing it in the championship. Can he do it? A lot of that got proven out, right? So it's like okay, now I kind of know what I have a little bit more. But like on this roster right now, if if a game a late in a game against uh, Bolivia, it's one one. And we're pushing for a goal and they're parking the bus. And we need a guy who's an aerial threat at the nine. Who are we bringing in? We're bringing in Sargent? Like, he's not really an aerial threat. We're not bringing in Bauer if Sargent starts. Like, he's not but, a big aerial threat. But Adam, ever since Burhalter came back, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Christopher Lund made every single roster. Didn't he, he might be right. You, I think you, he look, made every So I, I agree with you. You may – look – you're making sense, you, you, but you I'm not trying right to make Berhalter. sense here. You, you I'm trying to be. think of like be. what has Burhalter done so far. Yeah, so let's no, you're get right. the yeah, data. Yeah. Let's get the data so far. And it's like if he was I planning think... on not bringing Lund at some point, I was like, why has he brought him every single time? But I think the new data here is that I think the new data and X Factor is Haji right. And I and I think that the fact that he can do what he does. And you're like, okay, he's now a must. And I agree. Ballo and Sargent are kind of must, right? Ballo, I think, is a must because of the talent and the fact that he can compete at a really high level, and he's kind of proven that. Sargent's a, must, but Sargent's a must because of the form, and it seems like that's going to just roll until the end of the season at this point. And so now you're right. The question does become kind of like Pepe or Lund, which is interesting because you wouldn't think, like for everybody watching, you wouldn't think that's going to be the decision, right? It's like uh – -huh. Yeah. But it kind of becomes the decision. It's like, and for me, it's like, God, I hope there's people surrounding Burhalter. And I, I, you know, I doubt, I doubt this based on some things in the past, but I've, I've liked certain roster selections who they just be analytical. Cause at the end of the day, you're, you could be right. Right. Burhalter could go, Lund's my guy. I see a future with him. You know, let's bring him. But man, like to me, I'm looking at that and I'm going 0% chance Lund plays zero. Right. Haji, we or sorry, Pepe. We actually might have a need for him. There's not really another guy on this roster who could bring something that he brings. So certainly what I would do, um, maybe I'm giving Craig a little too much credit thinking he's going to be thinking this deeply about it. Maybe I am. Um, but man, we are like two months away. Roughly. About, right? Roughly. Like, guys, two months away. Like, oh man, it's so exciting. And it's like, Watching guy, our guys, and I, I've you know been watching some of your your abroad videos. Fun to see guys every weekend, right? Like just performing. And I, Adam, what I find fascinating of this one is this. Unlike the World Cup, where Burhalter legitimately like snubbed certain players that should have been there. This one, there are players like we mentioned Tillman, Pepe, or Luca De La Torre. We mentioned some players that are playing at a high level that are fantastic talents that if he snubs them for the players we mentioned, uh, it'll kind of be like, well, can't really argue with it. It, it, it kind of makes sense. It's not like he's snubbing these guys for Legette, Roldan, Zardes. He's snubbing them for other great players. It's incredible how far this team has come where we are we are almost comfortable. We're, we're actually comfortable with like, yeah, this guy's playing the Bundesliga just fine. But if he doesn't make the roster, it makes total sense. We talked about Maloney. He's playing in a mid-table Bundesliga team. He's a key player for Heidenheim. And we're like, probably not going to make the roster. And we don't give a crap. We're like, yeah, so be it. In the past, we had like right. Costa. <laughs> and then there was the Jackson Yeo era. And then um, um, uh, the Will Trap era of Burhalter. That was crazy too. <laughs> so, so all of Go that happened. Me. 
But everyone, let's do this because we're at 45 minutes. We pretty much covered everything. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Will Burhalter bring Christopher Lund or Ricardo Petty? This was fun, and I don't know, man. I look forward to, to the roster when it's out late Me May, too. early June. Thank you once again, Adam. Guys, go follow him on X. The handle is right below his head right now if you all don't follow him yet. Thanks for watching, everyone. Drop a like before you go. Have a great day. Ciao.